Hey, by now, you should have gotten a glimpse of the power of the Holy Spirit through the speaking of tongues. Mm -hmm. But what can hinder or halt God's flow in your life? Mm. We're going to talk about that and much more here on this episode of Couples Pursuit Live Bible Study Edition. Yes. Couples Pursuit. Hello, this is Vincent and Valerie Woodard. Woodard. And on this episode of Couples Pursuit Live, we're going to talk about the topic in my feelings, mm -hmm. the source of all grief. Yes, yes, yes. Look, oh let's pray because this is going to be a good one. And uh, we just need all God's help, the Holy Spirit, everybody. We need to help you understand that we are here to do a purpose, but we need our comforter. We need our helper. And for, for that, we got to move some things out the way. Mm -hmm. So, Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. We adore you, God. We thank you for a moment like this. Lord, we thank you for the people that are watching this Bible study. Lord, continue to bless them and keep them, God. Lord, let the ears be receptive and the hearts um, be good soul, Lord. To plant yeah. this seed so it will grow and they will share this with other people, God. We love you, we adore you. Let the words we say, Lord, be edifying to your people, God. And Lord, just continue to um, bless this Bible study as our whole goal is to provide biblical principles for your people, God, that we might have overlooked in the past. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray and we say amen. 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 So um, the title, In My Feelings, mm -hmm. The Source of All Grief. Yeah. You might say, Vince, that doesn't sound like a Bible study topic. <laughs> well, as we discussed in our last Bible study, we talked about receiving the, the speaking of tongues and it's a manifestation of the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Mm -hmm. We can that we really need to live this Christian life, mm -hmm. and um, with that, when you have that, if you receive that, you may say, "Vince, I'm still dealing with some stuff. Some stuff that still that I'm still having to wrestle with. I'm still having to um, to deal with," mm -hmm. and that's why. The topic is in my feelings mm -hmm. because sometimes we are the best ones to get in our own way. <laughs> this is true. It's what we tell ourselves. Yes, yes. That sometimes stops us. Mm -hmm. that. Yes, and we can um, hinder ourselves from our own experiences by living our life through our lens mm -hmm. of the things that we think we can say, think we can do. As opposed to living from God's lens or from yeah. God's perspective. Mm -hmm. Our our goal should be to live our lives through God's viewpoint. What he says will be what we can do. What he, what he says in the word that we can do. Not what our feelings dictate right. to us that we can do. So yes. in, in my feelings, babe, what do you think about that? Ooh, I think <laughs> this is a great um, topic for me to revisit mm -hmm. I think because sometimes uh, I am very guilty of being in my in my feelings about things thinking too much mm -hmm. pondering about well what if this and what if that thinking on all these things that have never actually happened or aren't going to happen but the, the thoughts that can come to stop you from moving forward um, versus the truth of God's word mm -hmm. which is what that we can do all things through him and you know, in him there is no no shadow of, of turning. So if I'm in him, then I'm going to be okay. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I mean, we're going to park us our, our scripture mm -hmm. um, in John chapter 14. And in that um, little backstory, um, while you're turning in your Bibles or um, scrolling in your Bibles, whatever your device that you have, but a little backstory in John 14 um, is when. Um, the night Jesus was to be crucified mm -hmm. and the disciples was like no no you know we, we, can't, we can't believe this is you know it's happening he's telling them what's going to happen and um they were they were you know downcast they were they were they just heard this news because they're they're following Jesus now they were fishermen a lot of them had businesses of their own they had families of their own mm -hmm. and they left all that to follow Jesus because they just believed in the good news, this gospel that he spread it. And now he's telling them that he's just going to be crucified. He's going to he's going to you know, surrender, you know, give himself. Mm -hmm. And um he knows that they're they're 
a little anxious about it. We don't know what's going to happen. You've been with us for three right. years, and now we're here. So in John 14, he simply says this wonderful verse. Yeah. What does it say? 14, that? 1 says, don't let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. <laughs> and it's, it's an instruction yeah. to the it's disciples. Simple. He said, don't let your heart be troubled. Yeah. He's not saying it should not be trouble. Don't let it. Yeah, don't but get it, lost in it. Don't get lost in yeah. it. Don't get don't yeah. get don't succumb to the pressure of it. Don't let that um that anxiety turn to fear. You know, mm-hmm. don't let your don't heart Don't let it rule you. Yeah. Yeah. Believe in me. Trust in me. Mm-hmm. If you believe in God, believe in my father, believe in all also in me, because he's been telling them all along the way, you know, I, I'm I'm going to have to be crucified. Yes, yes. Yeah, but yes. he says that, you know, this temple will be torn down and in three days it'll be rebuilt. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm going to come back. <laughs> and they're like, okay, Lord, you know, uh, we, we, uh, we hear you, but still, you know, hoping that it's not going to happen. And even one of the disciples, Peter, was like, no, God forbid. Mm-hmm. I'm paraphrasing, of course. And he was like, uh, get behind me, Satan. Yeah. Because it has to, I have to do this. Mm-hmm. It has to be fulfilled. And so, you know, Jesus' resurrection is one of the greatest examples of of the fact that we can trust and believe in him. If we can trust and believe in, in his word and a God that sent his son, the son that died, the son that was buried, we saw it, they mm-hmm. saw it. Uh, the son that was resurrected, they saw it. He walked through a wall, he showed them the hole in his hand and then he he ascended to the father. If if nothing else can make you believe. Yeah. If I can only imagine being there in that time and being one of the disciples and witnessing that, yeah, you know? For real. And and also being of the mindset like okay well yes this is the king you know yeah. this is the messiah this is this is the person i fully fully believe that and now you're telling us that you're going to leave us yeah don't and, leave. yeah <laughs> and so in, in 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 our feelings it's like well what what do we do now you know mm-hmm. what what what's going to happen now mm-hmm. and we want to you know it's, talk about this bible study because i believe a lot of christians sometimes we don't move forward forward in the things that we're supposed to do the, the purpose that god has on our lives because of the fact that we're, we're unsure about so many things mm-hmm. and because of that uncertainty we don't move we right. don't take the next step you know we just hear some bad news mm-hmm. you know like the disciples they heard they heard something they didn't, they didn't really expect to hear mm-hmm. so now well what do we do how do we move forward? What, what do we go? But Jesus simply said, and the, the verse again is verse 14, John 14, chapter 1. Mm-hmm. He just simply verse said, mm-hmm. don't let your heart yeah. be in trouble. That means we have the ability to not let it. We have the capacity to do that. Mm-hmm. And it's simply a willingness to want to do. Now, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I know life has can throw some curveballs and some softballs, some snowballs, and some mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. big balls and little and whatever. But what Jesus is saying, and I believe it to this day is so relevant, is that even with your feelings, even with those things that are building up inside of you, that we should have the capacity to control those things and not let them turn to fear and not let them turn to dread. Don't let them stop you from living your purpose because these are the disciples, but these disciples, when Jesus left, they, they became apostles, which which means ones that have heard from God, have, have been with God, have been with Jesus, ones that have been with Jesus, ones that have been with him and spoken with him and heard from him. Mm-hmm. And so if they would just stay there and not really move, we wouldn't have this great gospel that we have right now because he told them to go yes. and spread the word to um, Samaria, Judea and Samaria and to all, all, yeah, to all the world. Yeah. And But we, they could not stay in their feelings. And that's why I, I titled this Bible study as such because we cannot stay just in our, in our feelings. Yeah. And and it's not all about us. Mm-hmm. You know, when I say that, you know, when we can be in our feelings sometimes, we can be, you know, uh self-centered. Just it's all it's all about me and what I want, what I think, what is true. And when I mentioned before about Peter, I want to also include um, Thomas and Judas as well. As the disciples, we are we see uh, a couple of things that take place. Of course, Judas betrayed him. 
Um, but it was so that, again, prophecy would be fulfilled. Mm-hmm. God's will would be fulfilled. Um, he betrayed him for the 30 pieces of silver. And also then Thomas, he doubted. And then Peter denied him. Mm-hmm. You know, um, they were all in their feelings at some point. Yes. And so even though they were walking with with Jesus and they saw as what we call, you know, what we can now uh, witness to as being miraculous. And we think, you know, what would it have been like if we were there? They saw it. Mm-hmm. They witnessed it. They felt that power firsthand. They saw the sick healed. They saw the lame walk and the blind see. And still, I must doubt it. Yes, yes. You know? L- look, this may shock a lot of people, this mm-hmm. statement I'm about to say. But the source of a lot of your grief is a self-inflicted. Think about it. Yeah. How we react to things, mm-hmm. like anger. What work when we're mad about something? Yeah. You know, anxiety when we are mm-hmm. worried, worried about something. Yeah. Or, or, or something that we think that's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, crying when we're upset about something. When we're sad about something. Mm-hmm. When we are. When we are. Mm-hmm. Guilt when we are ashamed mm-hmm. of something. And those things we put on ourselves. And you know, not saying that a situation didn't happen. But right. it's like sometimes we can we can punish ourselves before the result of whatever happened happened. It's like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Oh, I can't believe I said that. Oh, yeah. I can't believe that happened. Oh, woe is me. I can't believe, you know, this is this is probably going to happen because of the, oh, I just can't make yeah. it. I can't I can't <laughs> do it. And and yeah. there there in lies what I said before is the source. Of, mm-hmm. of the grief mm-hmm. and not to minimize life situations happen but I'm saying how we deal with it and how we react to it sometimes we can let it just stop us in our tracks cold baby yeah if we don't have our mind set on the right thing the first thing you said was anger mm-hmm. right and the second thing you said was um anxiety anxiety mm-hmm. and then the third thing you said was like crying, crying. okay so First, with anger, we have a we have a prescription. We have a remedy for that. Um, we're supposed to cast all our cares, mm-hmm. right? We're supposed to be slow to speak, slow to anger. And then if we are angry, be angry if there's cause to be angry, but sin not. So God has given us a remedy for every situation. Mm-hmm. The second one was anxiety. He says, be anxious for nothing. But in all things with prayer and specific prayer or supplication, make your request known unto God. And then the third, crying, mm-hmm. worrying. Uh, again, cast all your cares on him because he cares for you and do not worry about tomorrow how you're going to clothe yourself what are you going to eat you know surely God will take care of you and so he said all of these things in his word because he knew that tests and trials and tribulations would come um, that would would pull on those emotions mm-hmm. that would pull on that 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 fear but fear doesn't come from God yeah yes and, and like I said situations happen I mean even the shortest, sweetest verse in the Bible. I think it's found in John 11. Jesus. Yeah, 35. Jesus wept. Mm -hmm. And it was a story that he heard that Lazarus, a friend of his, had died. Mm -hmm. And I mean, of course, Jesus, he knows things are going to happen. But the the sorrow that Martha and Mary must have gone through, and even other ones that are around him. They were anxious. They were angry. I would even suffice to say, where were you? Mm -hmm. Where were you? And in fact, I love that whole touching. I just hear the strings going (laughs) when hearing reading that story. Because it's like, if you were here, he might would have. They didn't say that. No. They said, if you were here, he wouldn't have passed. He wouldn't have died. It's like they had so much faith, and they still had throughout the whole time. And just that right there, Jesus is like, you're right. You know, I can't. I'm, I can't. I'm, yeah. I'm sad because you, you're believing in the I'm right sad thing. Because you're, you're sad. Yes. But. <laughs> but it's a greater thing that had to be revealed when the right. story, if you don't know the story, is that he, um, his friend Lazarus died and they buried him in the tomb. Mm-hmm. And um, he went to the tomb mm-hmm. and when he heard the news, he said, Jesus wept. He wept over the fact that, you know, uh, his, his the people the following the people that he loved it's around sorrow. him was some sorrow mm-hmm. so he went to the tomb and he told them to open it Martha was like wait 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 hold on wait 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 it's been four days now it's been four days don't you just stench <laughs> alone that's gonna be tough yeah it's gonna be tough uh-huh. and in fact he just gave him comfort that they're gonna see a miracle today yeah you know and oh wow so even with that 
not saying you know like crying is bad or none of those no, things. No, it's not. But the fact that Jesus was like, I'm, I'm doing this. We're going through this so we can all be witness. You can mm-hmm. all see the glory of God. That's really yes. what this whole would have culminated to. Is and of that, and then we live through that lens right there. Mm-hmm. Then okay, yeah, we can have the tears. We can wipe them off. We can be a little bit upset. We can shake it off, you know. Mm-hmm. But he said, "Don't let your heart be troubled." I'm going back yes. to John 14:1. It's like not saying, "Why did you?" Right. It's, it's not, he's not rebuking him for rebuking them for that. Mm-hmm. He's saying, "If it is." Mm-hmm. You can you can control it. You, believe in God, believe yes. in me. And mm-hmm. then to be, as he says, be ye holy as I am holy. Your father is holy. That's a continual state of being, a continual process. So to say, don't let your heart be troubled. It will come. Mm-hmm. Like the Bible says, a weapon formed against you um, will not prosper. It may come, but it won't prosper. Mm-hmm. You know, so then it, if something happens, like this is really hard to to think about sometimes but I know if for some reason something were to happen to my husband and I and he was to go before I was um man I would be so heartbroken mm. but I would not be hopeless mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. because I do believe in God and I do believe in Jesus and there will be days when the rubber meets the road and it's like I believe in God, in God and I believe in Jesus, but I miss my husband. Yeah. I want to touch him, feel him, talk to him, sense him, smell him. My 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 flesh, my 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 body, my spirit is crying out for this connection that I that I can't imagine living without now after 25 years. I know that it is necessary for me to even in a time as terrible as that would be for me to still believe to mm-hmm. still trust to still pray to still walk to still uh be an example and yes i would grieve you know as mary and martha and all those that love lazarus grieved but they grieved and they and they still believe yes. you know they still believe that jesus could do it and then when he didn't do it it's like okay well let's bury him and and move on and then he comes back and it's like oh (laughs) you know you bring him back but also to piggyback on on what you said about you know the four days sometimes and and you know the death is 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 the extreme the death of a loved one is an extreme but some situations that we encounter in life do seem dead Mm -hmm. it does seem like it's over oh my gosh this isn't gonna happen and then we get caught up in how we feel about that Instead of really looking forward and trusting and believing. And then God, uh, Jesus, raised Lazarus from the dead. Yeah. The dead. He was dead. Mm -hmm. He was stinking. You know, they say he's been four days. He's going to be stinking. He's wrapped in grave clothes. Right. From head to toe. But Jesus brought him back. He mm-hmm. brought him and back and restored to him life. because nobody, and restored nobody, him. Brought about nobody brought anything about the stench. Nobody brought anything. No, about they didn't. Decay in his body. And that nothing. was their expectation. No, he walked out. So yeah. he was. He, not only did he, you know, raise him from dead, which is a miraculous thing. I yes. said not only like I'm making light of it. No, but I'm just saying he also it's restored him. Yeah. yeah, it's a God thing. Yeah. And, and 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 speaking on the matter of guilt. Oh, and I mean, sorry, grief. Mm-hmm. Um, like during the funeral, funeral time, if someone is a believer of, of Jesus Christ and and they give their life, and then that person, you know, something happens, they, mm-hmm. they pass away. So even during that time, a lot of sorrow that we experience, and that you know, some people cry. They seem like uncontrollably, uncontrollably, and they and they go through like battles, of depression and stuff. And I know, man, you know, losing a loved one. I know it's tough. I know it's yeah. tough. Um, but even with, I mean, really, you think about the fact that that person is probably if they're if they're in Jesus Christ. I'm sorry, not probably. Then they're they're in, they're going to see, the next experience they're going to see is Jesus. The next the thing that comes to their mind after the death here, the next thing that, that will appear before them would be Jesus. To be present with the it would be pre- yes, yeah. and, and that right there, you know, we <laughs> we can all. We can almost be envious, you know. It's like, wow, mm. they, they're there. They don't have to do this anymore. Yeah. <laughs> and they're not feeling any hurt, not feeling yeah. any pain. But mm-hmm. the grief that we experience yeah. is we're saying things like, look, I'm, I'm going to miss them so much. Mm-hmm. Um, 
what is life going to be be like without them? Yeah, you know, and and they just you know wrestle and cry with that. And not not saying it's not that's not a thing that people do. I'm just saying we actually think about the fact that like my wife said, she's not hopeless because she knows my next experience, I'm going to see Jesus. Yeah, I'd be happy. I'd be happy <laughs> knowing that that is his next experience, but also sorrowful in the fact that I don't I no longer get to experience him Mm -hmm. you know and God forbid you know I've had it I've had some some deaths in my family um you know uh my uncle who passed away very young we have a niece who passed away at the Mm -hmm. age of 25 I have a nephew who um who passed away um it hasn't been a year ago, I don't think. And then you just had a cousin who who passed away. And we've mm-hmm. had people to take their lives. And, you know, all of these things that will, will can cause you to feel like, oh, my gosh. Um, but the thing is, you don't tell a person not to grieve. Mm-mm. You know, there are going to be days where you don't you may not feel like praying. You may not feel like talking. You may not feel like emoting. You may not feel like reading your word. You may not feel like doing whatever, but we have to get to a point uh, in time where even with the grief, Mm -hmm. we can function. And the only way you can do that is by uh, John 14, 1. Believe in God, believe also in me. Everything that God has said, everything that Jesus has demonstrated is true. And even though we feel like all hope is gone, it's not. Yeah. You say to God, you know what? I'm struggling and I don't feel like talking to you today, but I am. And here are your promises. This is what you told me. You said you were going to keep me. You never leave me or forsake me. And then the word says he'll give you a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Mm-hmm. He'll give you beauty for ashes and joy for your pain. He would do that, you know, for us. But not if we stay focused on how we, how, only how we feel. That's exactly right. And that's, and that can lead to, I started the title of this. I told you, um, self-centeredness self-centered the source of all grief Mm -hmm. because sometimes we can stay focused not just you know passing by you know what i feel sad but i know that it's going to be a great day but staying there just staying there it's a it's a um proverb and um proverbs 13 10 Mm -hmm. uh, that talks about how when you're just wrapped up in you like (laughs) what happens it's all about me yeah it's all about me Uh, i'll read that baby Proverbs 13, 10 says, Arrogance leads to nothing but strife, but wisdom is gained by those who take advice. Yes, yes. Um, pride could also be f- referred to as arrogance. Mm-hmm. And it's um, it's when one's, when you place importance on your own ability or your own desire versus anything else. Yeah. You know, some people could say, Over and above. I can't help everything. It. Yeah. I, I, I can't help myself. Basically, you're saying you don't want to help yourself. If you, if you choose to stay there. Yeah. You choose to stay in that place. Now I know you know somebody can scratch a car, and you just want to go, you know, take, you know, do something to them or whatever. <laughs> but I'm just saying, but but constantly you like you snapping, always snapping at people. You always, you know, bouncing off the wall mm-hmm. when everything everything goes doesn't go wrong. your way. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. you just kind of stay there. You know, you, you kind of, and that's that's you're almost living in a pride. Um, situation where it's really just about your feelings yeah, and your feelings alone, of... and, and anybody else just have to suffer the repercussions of of how I feel right now. I'm not feeling good. We all good. Life is good. You good. Everything. But when I feel when I'm hurt, when I'm hurt, upset, you know, everybody's gonna feel it. Yeah, and everyone so, and, needs to know. Yeah, and you're, and you're living respond. dangerously in that area yeah. of, of of pride. Of being prideful of yourself, being self-centered, only thinking about what you can do, and not seeing yourself through God's perspective. You only right. seeing yourself what what you can do, and that's why that, ver- that verse in Proverbs thirteen ten it says mm-hmm. arrogance, and some verses say pride mm-hmm. leads to nothing but nothing strife. But strife. Some say grief. Some translations say grief, mm-hmm. and but wisdom is gained by those who take advice. So my advice to you <laughs> is that. <laughs> Do not live in that place. Do not live, and I'll tell you this appropriately, in my feelings, in your feelings. Do not stay there. I know a lot of people that just get, they stay upset. Not just get upset, 
they just stay upset. It's I mean, a way post of at life. the post that you call them on the phone. You know, you hear about them from somebody else. They just wow. <laughs> and any news that they get is negative. Nothing is ha- is is good. Anything good, they can find something bad about it. If it's not about them, they don't want to hear it. And you know, being in your feelings, being selfish, being arrogant, being prideful, is so the opposite of mm-hmm. what Christ called us to do. He said the greatest among you will be a servant. Yeah. And I believe there is um, scripture where uh, I can't remember what section. As a matter of fact, Mark 9, 33 and 34, where the disciples are arguing on the road to Capernaum. And they're like, well, who's going to be the greatest among yeah. them? Why is that even a topic of conversation? <laughs> it's not about you. And we see that now still, um, you know, even in, and I was going to say in the kingdom, but not in the kingdom because the kingdom doesn't do that. We see that in church yes. in realms, in religious circles where people are, you know, scrambling to how many members you got? Well, what, what are y'all doing over there? And, and you took my member and, you know, um, you know, uh, we got the best this and well, well, our sanctuaries. Well, what? What? Yeah. What are yeah. we talking about? It's not about you. It's it is not about, about it is about Christ and him crucified. If we preach that, if we tell that, then we can draw people to come to Christ. But guess what? When we get in our feelings, when we become self-centered, when we become arrogant and prideful, nobody is witnessing. Nobody no. is, is, is being the, the, the greatest among them, which is the servant. That's right. No one's doing that. And, and you, you can't have a servant's heart and be selfish. That's right. And you can even say, well, Vince, that's the least of my problems. I'm not I'm not prideful. You know, matter of fact, I'm I don't I don't think highly of myself at all. Matter of fact, I don't even hardly think I don't I don't even want to stand up. I don't even want to talk to people. I'm just scared to do this. I'm scared to do that. Opposite where, end of the there, you, there you go. You're on the <laughs> other end because you're still thinking about yourself. Yeah. You, you, you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. You're still thinking about what you can do versus what or God can. said mm-hmm. you can do. Mm-hmm. You're still seeing your life from your lens mm-hmm. as opposed to from God's lens and his mm-hmm. perspective. Yeah. You, you're telling yourself, what well, you know, this is just my level of comfort. Well, no, you just made yourself comfortable there. Yeah. No, God has called us to much right. greater it is your places. level. <laughs> it's, it's your level. <laughs> That's exactly right. Yeah. But he has called us to be more. Mm-hmm. He said greater things, greater works shall we do. And we can't do that when we say, oh, well, I'm just. I'm only. Mm-hmm. You know, that's for them and not for me. All of us have a purpose um, and all of us have a role as servant in this world. It mm-hmm. shows up differently. Some of us serve in, in ways that are seen more often than others but we can serve every day and to decide well god can't use me well that's selfish and that's prideful. selfish and prideful and that, i, I yeah. believe that stops a lot of people from even trying to receive this free gift of the holy spirit through the speaking yes. of tongue the manifestation of that because mm-hmm. i don't want to be embarrassed wonder what people might say you know i wonder what if i want to say it right you know and so you know now you're not manifesting that power through you to mm-hmm. other people mm-hmm. and somebody could be out there right now suffering waiting for you waiting for you yeah to be the light and the salt but you've chosen that you can't do it right and i don't get me wrong i've lived in that place i've lived in a place where i I can't do this, Lord God, um, baby. I can't. I can't be who this person that you want me to be. You desire me to be. I, I, I even desire myself to be. I, I can't. I, I don't it's just, see it. I don't see it. Yeah. And I live from that place from a long time. So there is hope for you yeah. if you are in that place because you can. I mean, it's the free gift. God, God has made this available to each and every one that believes in the Son Jesus Christ. Mm. And from that, once you understand that you don't have to live in uh, low self-esteem, you don't have to live in the area of pride and y'all yeah. thinking so much about yourself and my way, but you can actually live from the place of righteousness where if you become a follower of Jesus Christ, you repent and you accept salvation mm-hmm. and then you receive the free gift of salvation and the Holy Spirit and the manifestation of his power through speaking of in tongues. Wow. What it would it would bless your life yes. so much, yes. so much. It gives you the power to do because that thing I was talking about before with having hope and being able to go on. If you know, God forbid, something happened and my husband goes on before me. The only reason that I can say that I know that I will be able to go on is because of that power. Mm-hmm. 
because in and of my own strength I would not be able to and even with that days would still be tough it would still be hard you know I've heard of my peers who have lost their spouses and it just has made me weep at the thought of losing my own husband I'm weeping because uh, yes they've lost their loved one and how much they must be hurting right now and what gosh Mm -hmm. it is but for the grace of God that it's not me yeah you know I'm grateful for that but in the same token I've experienced people on two different spectrums one where you know they've lost a loved one a a mother or a father and they stop living Mm mm-hmm they stop living. They get stuck in their feelings. They get stuck in their emotions, in their pride, in their anger, in their bitterness uh, with God or whomever. Maybe someone something happened and someone took their life. Um, but we are not meant to stay here always. That's right. And so, again, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. It is God's plan that we leave this shell one day and come back to him. Yes, that's difficult. And I think that goes back to, yes, Jesus wept. I mm-hmm. I, I do understand. Mm-hmm. God, um, I believe it's in the book of James. I'm sorry if this if it's not that that book, but there is a portion of scripture where it talks about Jesus has been tempted in all manners. Mm-hmm. He, he has experienced everything mm-hmm. that you could possibly experience. He came here and he showed us. Other than sin, he's experienced life, and he's done it without sin. Oh, that's the one we do. We don't have a high priest that. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I got you. I got you saying. Yeah. Yes, right. it's that scripture, and I'm sorry, I don't, I don't know what, I don't know that one off the top of my head, but he's experienced things so that we can see. I call him the great demonstrator. Those are my own words. That it's not written down anywhere. Mm-hmm. But Jesus was the great, is the great demonstrator. He came from heaven to earth. And put on uh, human flesh and showed us how to do it. Yes. So there is nothing that he will put on us that we can't bear. Nothing that will come upon us. And it doesn't mean we won't bear it with great pain and agony maybe. But he will bring us through everything. Amen. Amen. So look, hopefully we resonated something to you. Yeah. That you, you take it. A self-examination of yourself. Mm-hmm. Say, am I am I living? Do in I my live feelings? in my feelings? <laughs> Do I live in my feelings? Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I might visit every night. I'm trying to stay out of that neighborhood, right? But am I? Am I did I move here? Did I bring like a U-Haul truck? Have I built an altar there? Yeah, in my feelings. Yes. Does that rule me? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because in order to um, get out of that place, first of all, if you haven't already, you say you pray this prayer, Heavenly Father. Lord, I repent of my sins. I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I confess that he is your son and that he died and you raised him up on the third day. Yes. I accept Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. And I give my life. And I just thank you for accepting in the name of Jesus Christ we pray amen that's step one if step you pray one. that prayer and you are part of the family and what mm. do you say uh, welcome, welcome to the to family, the, family. <laughs> the family of believers now you just need to find a uh, a place of 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 worship you know uh, if you don't have a, a brick and mortar place I encourage you to to begin to seek God ask God for where you should go how you should interact I know a lot of people do church online these days, um, and that's good. But it's also to fellow, also good to fellowship together. Mm-hmm. That's scripture. That's right. We are to come together um, so that we can build up one another. That's right. You know, and, and, and until you find that place, come check us out online. Yeah. On um, every Wednesday, we're here. We're just teaching biblical principles and mm-hmm. foundationals. Um, teachings yeah. to help you, you know, just learn and get closer to God. You know, some things, you know, we can we can go deep. I just love the Lord so much and so many things that He's put in our heart to share. But our greatest thing that we have, I believe, is our charge is to teach this gospel to, as plainly as we can to everyone that we can. <laughs> yeah. Anybody who who is listening, because we all, whatever it is that we're seeking for in our life. Uh, when we find our place in God, 
that is going to come mm -hmm. to you. If we seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, all these things will be added to you. All the stuff that you, you, you need, want, and desire, you know, and, and even so your needs, wants, and desires will change once you seek God's face, because you will line up with what it is that he has mm -hmm. uh, for you to do. And so if you said that prayer tonight, uh, we want to just thank God for you coming into the family of faith. And we want to encourage you to continue to come and listen. If you liked what you heard tonight, please share it. There's mm -hmm. probably someone else who may be living in their feelings or living with someone who is in their feelings. And it may encourage them to take another look, to look a little closer and say, oh, I, you know, I probably could change that about mm -hmm. me. And, and you can begin by first repenting and, and, and becoming a follower of Jesus Christ, receiving him. But then also after that, um, you know, being renewed by the transforming of your mind, transformed yes. by the renewing of your mind. And that is through Christ Jesus, through his word. Um, we love you. We thank God for you. Thank you for listening tonight. And um, until next time, uh, we pray that the Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you and give you peace, keep you from all hurt harm, danger, sickness, disease, and virus. And we are so glad that you visited us here on Couples Pursuit Bible Study Edition. Until next time, we'll see you. Bye. Bye.